Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how I put Windows 10 on a 19 year old laptop. Now all of this started about 6 years ago when I got the laptop from Valley Village back in 2018. It had Windows XP Home on it and I never really used it for special stuff. But then, about 11 months ago, an idea popped into my head that was like, hmm, what happens if I try and put Windows 10 on this laptop? So, that's what I set out to do. Alright, so now let's get into the specs of this 19 year old laptop right here. This is a Dell Inspiron B120. It has a 40 gigabyte hard drive, 256 megabytes of RAM, and a 1.4 gigahertz Intel Celeron M processor. So yeah, you know I was working with insane restrictions. My first step was to get it from Windows XP to Windows Vista, and then to Windows 7, and then to Windows 8.1, and then to 10. So I burned my first Windows Vista CD, and then I put it in the laptop, and uh, guess what? To install Windows Vista, your computer needs at least 512 megabytes of RAM. So, my computer couldn't install Windows Vista, or so I thought. So there's actually a hack that you can do in the command prompt, which actually allows you to bypass the system checking part of the installation, and it's just called no sys check. And guess what? Windows Vista installed and it worked just fine. Now, since it was a super old laptop, there was no Windows arrow, which is that like transparency effect which everyone friggin loved. And without Windows Arrow, that looks like this instead. It looks pretty bad. And there were multiple attempts of me doing this as well. So now let's upgrade to Windows 7. So I made a Windows 7 DVD and of course it, uh, it didn't work because that installation also required 512 megabytes of RAM to work. And the Gnosis check command actually did not work with this installation. So I had to do something else. So in the Windows 7 files, there's actually a file, I think it's called winsetup.dll and you need a hex editor in order to change some code. I had to change it from this hex code into this hex code and I don't know why but that worked and I could install Windows 7 on 256 megabytes of RAM. And I actually failed a couple times trying to do that. So this was attempt number one. Oh, it just- Oh my god! Windows 7! Do the- do the thing! Do the thing! Do the thing! Oh, come on, what the fuck? But then this is attempt number two. I actually don't think that this is gonna work, but it is worth a try. What? I, all right, so I also tried out the starter edition of Windows 7, which didn't work also for some reason. Here's another attempt at the experiment. <sighs> and finally, this is the one that worked. All right, let's see if it works now. <gasps> Oh, oh my god, that means it's working. This is Windows 7. And unlike Windows Vista, Windows 7 actually did not support the graphics drivers. And there were many graphics cards that actually became unsupported when Windows 7 came out. At least without having to manually look for graphics drivers. So in short, the screen was a very low resolution. So... This is when I started running into problems. Now, CPUs in general have stuff known as instruction sets. And older CPUs do not have as many instruction sets as newer CPUs, which is why certain programs do not support the older CPUs. For example, AMD Phenom CPUs does not support SSE 4.1, which is required to run certain games. Now the CPU in that old laptop is an Intel Celeron M, and I think it came out in like 2003, and it doesn't have the 64-bit instruction set which is needed to run Windows 11, which only has a 64-bit version. Now the CPU does have the SSE2 instruction set which is required to run Windows 8, 8.1, and 10. But another thing that that CPU needs, which is also required to run Windows 8, 8.1, and 10, is something called NXBit, or Execute Disable Bit, which is a security thing for Windows. And that laptop, does not support NXBit. So installing Windows 8 and 8.1 and 10 on this computer is going to be a little bit tricky. So I tried to bypass the requirements by doing certain hacks. Alright, I saw this video. Basically what I'm doing here, I'm taking the uh, install.wim, which is basically where all the data of the installation is, and I'm putting it in the Windows Vista one. So this is the install.wim from the Windows 10 folder. Well, let's see if it, uh, let's see if it works. Are you fucking kidding? So I tried installing Windows 10 on this before, but it said that it does not have enough RAM to even make a RAM disk. And look at that, there is enough memory to create a RAM disk service. <sighs> okay, well, that's- So, 
I scrapped the project for a couple of months, until I went to California and my uncle actually had a super super old HP computer from 2007 that had 1 gigabyte of DDR2 RAM. And removing the RAM from the HP laptop and putting it into the Dell laptop actually worked and I managed to upgrade the RAM in the Dell laptop to 1 gigabyte. I found this video of this guy actually reviewing a laptop that is similar to the one that I have. His has an Intel Pentium M instead of an Intel Celeron M, and he managed to install Windows 10 on that laptop. But that version of Windows 10 is a little bit special, and that version is Windows 10 1607. I finally got Windows 10 on this old Dell computer. That is insane. Oh, let's start. Oh, no way. No way! <laughs> no way! No freaking way! <laughs> and look how slow it is. <laughs> okay, this is a $20 Value Village laptop. So, I'm gonna run the computer for a series of tests, and then I'm gonna ultimately decide if this laptop is still usable in 2024. Let's go. So now, let's test out this laptop and see how good it is. First is startup time. Now the startup time of this computer from the power button to the desktop is a pretty respectable 42.8 seconds, which is still pretty decent in 2024 considering the laptop uses an old fashioned parallel ATA hard drive. As you probably would expect, however, it takes longer to open up Edge and play the video. Now web browsing on this laptop is not the worst thing in the world. It is pretty doable when you're just scrolling and clicking on links, but this old PCMCIA Wi-Fi card is very, very slow and the speed tops out at about 10 megabits per second. Now watching YouTube videos on this computer actually barely works. Like if I try to go on the YouTube website, videos aren't even watchable and only the audio plays. Now using Bing to watch the videos instead, like the search engine, actually does allow you to watch the videos and the performance is not great at all. YouTube videos struggle to play even well set to a lowly 144p and the video still glitches out a lot. So now let's talk about the battery. Now because this is a 19 year old laptop, the battery in this laptop has been severely degraded. However, it still works and it holds a charge. And it's very likely that that battery has been replaced by its previous owner. Now under load running the TS bench in throttle stop, the battery lasts a oh, still pretty impressive 47 minutes and 8 seconds. Now on idle, the laptop only lasts 12 minutes longer at about 59 minutes and 2 seconds. This is surprising because there isn't that much of a difference between the battery under load and the battery on idle. I think the reason why is because just running Windows 10 by itself is already pretty taxing on the CPU. I think the most interesting part about this test is that this computer in the under load test was running the TS Bench test with the size set to 120M, which took a whopping 31 minutes to complete, or about 1876 seconds. And running the same exact 120M test on my modern Dell computer takes 19 seconds. 19 seconds versus 1,876 seconds, which means that my new Dell laptop is about 99 times faster in this test. Now what about the app support? Now this laptop only has a 32-bit CPU, which means that there is no support for 64-bit applications, which is ever more common these days. But this opens up support for legacy 16-bit games and programs instead, and it's also better to play those games on actual real hardware that supports it rather than a new computer that's just emulating it. Now what about the graphics? Now the graphics are very very bad. Even in Windows XP, when there are proper graphics drivers, the Intel 915GM graphics inside of this laptop ran big rigs over the road racing at solid 6 FPS. And as you can imagine, drivers became unsupported by the time Windows 7 came out. And this is running Windows 10, so obviously we're now dealing with the Microsoft basic display adapters. This is why watching YouTube videos is painfully slow, not only due to the slow single core single thread CPU, but also due to the lack of GPU drivers and video acceleration. So what are my concluding thoughts on this laptop? This laptop is not usable as a daily driver in 2024. I think it goes without saying, you could probably go to the dump 
and find a computer that is better than this. If you still use a laptop like that in 2024, you are honestly better off selling it and getting something better, which is a pretty easy thing to do in 2024. The old CPU in this laptop is only one core and one thread, mixed with a very, very small and a very, very slow parallel ATA 40 gigabyte hard drive. And you have yourself bottleneck city. But uh, anyway, I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you still have a laptop like this, I'm genuinely sorry, but please up update from this. And yeah, I'm gonna be seeing you guys in the next video. Okay, finally finished my 47 tutorial on color grading. Let's see how the video looks. Well, that looks terrible. We finally learned how to color grade again. Yep. It's not going well at all. Wait, that video looks terrible. Well, I mean, it's all part of the learning process. I mean, you do know that there are plugins that can help you with that. Really? Like, I mean, really good plugins, such as, like, Dehancer. You can actually get that film look pretty easily, and using it also allows you to add many filmic effects, like film grain, halation, and more using the Dehancer plugin. The plugin's also available using many different video editing programs, so, you know, try it out at, like, 10% off using the link in the description. Wow, thanks. Alright, try out the plugin. Yeah, the plugin's actually, it's actually pretty powerful. I just have to make sure I'm correcting the original clip first, just uh, so I can get the best results. Well, that's great. See you around. Damn.